Hi, and welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith, and in this video, we're going to learn the one to four player, the Princess Bride Adventure Book Game, designed by Ryan Miller and published by Ravensburger, who helped sponsor this video. The Princess Bride is a classic tale of fencing, fighting, torture, revenge, giants, monsters, chases, escapes, true love, miracles, and yes, even some kissing. And it'll be your job to keep the plot on course despite the interruptions of the sick grandson who's being read the story. So join me at the table and let's learn how to play. To set up, you'll open the adventure book to chapter one and lay it flat in the center of the play area. The pages of this book contain the map and rules for each of the game's six chapters. But you always begin with the first chapter, which is called As You Wish. Now place this double-sided replay tile beside the book, making sure that the grandson side is face up, and then put these five challenge completed counters nearby. You'll find several cards with this back, but they're actually made up of two different types of cards. You'll notice if you flip these over, all the cards in this deck have this storybook symbol, and you'll want to separate those from the other cards which don't have that symbol on the bottom. These are known as the story cards, and these are the special cards, and you'll shuffle each of these separately. The special deck you set to the right of the adventure book, and the story deck you place above it. These are the plot cards, and you'll shuffle them into another face-down deck that you'll place to the left of the adventure book. Now you deal four cards to each player from the story deck, and since this game is fully cooperative, players can lay their cards face up in front of themselves for everyone to see. Finally, give each player one of these reference cards. You'll set the game up this way no matter which chapter you're playing, but each chapter also has its own unique setup to follow. The game comes with a number of tokens and characters that you'll use in different combinations for each chapter. So to finish the rest of this chapter's setup, refer to the specific rules for it found at the back of the rulebook, in this case under the heading Chapter 1, As You Wish. Here it tells us that we need the miniatures for Wesley and Buttercup, six chore tokens, and one of these miracle tokens. And then you'll add them to the board following the steps shown here. Although we're just going to be using Wesley and Buttercup for this chapter, I wanted to show you that the game comes with a variety of miniatures representing characters from the movie, and these other ones will show up in the later chapters. Each chapter will have a pictured area where the adventure will be taking place. And this will be divided into spaces connected by paths, and those spaces will either have a number, a name, or both. So for example, this is space one, which is labeled farmhouse. This is just space two, and here's a space labeled as wood. The setup instructions now tell us to put Buttercup in the farmhouse and Wesley in the barn. Then we're told to put one of the chore tokens on the wood, well, and horse space, putting the remaining three on this area of the book here. Finally, you put one miracle token on this space, which is marked with a star. The chapter setup rules will also tell you who goes first, and in this case, it's whoever most recently completed a chore. All the other tokens and character miniatures can just be returned to the box. You won't be needing them for this chapter. But otherwise, that's the setup. In the Princess Bride Adventure Book game, you and the other players will be working together to overcome each chapter's unique challenges before the grandson, who is being told the story of the Princess Bride, interrupts. Complete all six chapters and you win. In other words, each chapter is like its own separate game, but to win the entire game, you have to beat every chapter back to back to back, although you don't have to play all of them in one sitting. However, certain elements will carry over from chapter to chapter, as we'll see. The game is played over a series of turns, beginning with the first player and then going clockwise around and around the table. On each player's turn, they will follow the same five steps, which you'll find outlined on this handy reference card. Each chapter also has its own set of special rules, which are shown here on the left-hand side of the adventure book. You should read these rules before you begin playing, as they will explain the special actions you're allowed to perform during this chapter, which we'll also talk about later. The first step you'll take on your turn is to move characters, and it's important to understand that you don't control a single character yourself. Instead, all the players cooperate to move all the characters around the board. So when it's your turn to move, you can either move a single character, zero, one, or two spaces on the board, or you can move two different characters a single space each. 
You can move a character in any direction between spaces as long as you follow the highlighted paths on the map. If you ever move into or over a space with a miracle token, collect it. We'll see how these are used later, but they aren't owned by any one player. Instead, they can be used by anyone. Any you've collected but haven't used by the end of the chapter, you will take with you into the next one. The next step is storytelling, and there are five types of actions you can take here in any order you like, and all of them are listed here on your reference sheet. But let's start with the first one called moving. You can discard any number of story cards from your hand to a shared story discard pile. And for each one discarded this way, you can pick any character and move them one space following the usual rules for movement. So for example, I could discard these three cards and then move Wesley once and Princess Buttercup twice. And as you can see, characters can share the same space. And during the storytelling step of your turn, no matter what other actions you do, you can always continue to discard and move characters as often as you like. Now another action you can take during this step is to trade a single card from your hand for a single card that another player has. Both of you must agree to the trade, and then you just swap the two cards. But you can only make one trade per turn, and you don't have to be on the same space together. Now, before we get much further, I should admit, I lied to you earlier when I said that during the storytelling step, there were only five different types of actions you can take, because, well, the chapter itself might have its own special actions that you can perform. Okay, well, I'm going to have to clean that up, but... I deserve that for lying to you. For example, here it says that you can discard any card from your hand to move a chore counter from Wesley's space back to this list of chores area. And removing chores from the board is important, as we'll learn right now. The reason you're moving characters, removing chores, and managing your hand of story cards is to complete each of the chapter's challenges, which are all listed right here on the right side of the chapter. And completing a challenge is another action that you can take during the storytelling step. I'm going to have to stop picking this book up. Each challenge has a name as well as the requirements needed to complete it. For example, the very first challenge requires that there be two or fewer chore tokens on the main map and that Wesley and Buttercup are both on the same space. Once you have the challenge conditions fulfilled, the active player can complete the challenge by checking the symbols shown to the right. These are the story cards that you must discard from your hand to the shared story discard pile. Story cards come in one of five different suits, each with its own color and icon. Courage, revenge, adventure, intrigue, and love. If you meet the challenge requirements and you can discard a number of story cards matching the icons shown on the side, you complete the challenge. In this case, you need a single love card. Some challenges in other chapters will require more story cards to complete them. And some chapters will also have special rules that require you to use story cards to complete other types of actions, such as moving tokens along different types of tracks. When you complete a challenge, place one of the challenge completed tokens on it to remind you that it's been completed. Then you gain the reward listed below the requirements. In this case, it says you'll draw one card from the deck of special cards. We won't go through all of the different special cards in this video because they're all explained directly on them, but they will either have special effects, which can be used during the storytelling step as an action, or they're wild cards that can be used in place of any story card to complete a challenge. And these can also be discarded just like any other card in order to move a figure. Either way, keep them in your hand until you're ready to use them. Another interesting thing about these special cards is that after you use them, you discard them to the story card deck's discard pile. And that brings us to the last action we have to talk about during the storytelling phase, and that's to use one of your miracle tokens, if you've collected one. And by using this, you return it to the box, and then either draw three cards from the story deck, or one card from the special deck, adding those cards to your hand. And those are all the actions. Once you've completed any you wish to take during the storytelling step, the next step is to draw two cards from the story deck and add them to your hand. If this deck is ever empty, just reshuffle the discard pile to form a new face down deck of story cards to draw from. And remember, any special cards you've played so far went into this discard pile. So after reshuffling the deck, it will now contain those special cards for you to draw again as well. Now it's time to move to the plot step of your turn. 
Discard the top card of the plot deck face up beside it, noting the number printed on the card, and then check the chapter's specific plot table here to find out what happens, and follow the printed instructions that match the number of the plot card that you discarded. For example, if you get a 1 to 15, then as mentioned here, you will move a chore counter from this area to the numbered space that was shown on the plot that you drew. On the other hand, if you had drawn a 16 to 20, then you'd refer to this area, and this says that you move Buttercup to Wesley's space, and then you draw and resolve another plot card. No matter what chapter you're playing, if you can't discard a plot card because its deck is empty and all of them have already been discarded, then the current chapter is said to be interrupted. This specific chapter also says that the chapter is interrupted if you need to add a chore token to the board, but there are none left in this area. The first time a chapter is interrupted, you flip over this replay counter so that the grandfather side is face up. Basically, the grandson is not enjoying the story and he wants you to tell it better. This means you've essentially lost the chapter, but you're going to get one more chance to succeed. With the grandfather side face up, you then clear off the board, discard your hands, shuffle the decks, and reset the board using the setup rules for that chapter, which we saw at the beginning of this video. Just note that any special cards you added to the story deck from your first attempt will stay in the story deck, making it better than it first was. And then you're ready to attempt the chapter again. If the chapter ever gets interrupted, when the replay counter is already showing the grandfather's side face up, then the game is immediately over and the players are defeated. You'll need to start again from chapter one if you want to try to win the game and complete all six chapters. If the chapter has not been interrupted after the plot step of your turn, then you move to the final step where the active player discards down to six cards in hand if they have more than that, and then the next player in clockwise order goes. Players will then continue taking turns until either the story is interrupted or they complete the final challenge of the chapter, which is how you win that chapter. With the chapter complete, all players discard their hands into the story discard pile. Then you clear all the tokens and pieces away and turn to the next chapter. Then here you'll need to follow all the setup instructions that we talked about before, but this time you'll use the additional setup instructions for that specific chapter. You also don't reset the decks. In other words, any special cards that you put into your story discard pile or deck will stay there and get shuffled together in this new deck. In this way, as you play each chapter, the deck here will continue to improve as you're able to add more and more special cards to it. Also, don't forget to reset and shuffle the plot deck, and don't reset the replay token. It stays on the side that it ended the chapter on. You will play chapter after chapter like this, and if you manage to complete all six chapters without being interrupted twice, then you win. The story is complete, and true love prevails. Now, if you're not able to play through all six chapters in one sitting, you can bookmark the game to pick up where you left off by following these steps here in the rulebook, which I'll leave for you to discover on your own. But otherwise, that's how you play the Princess Bride Adventure Book game. And don't forget, you can also play this solo, and there's no special rules for that. You just control your own hand of cards. If you have any questions, though, about anything you saw here, feel free to put them in the comments below, and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. You'll also find forums for discussion, pictures, other videos, and lots more over on the games page at Board Game Geek, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. And if you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like, subscribing, and clicking that little bell icon so you get notification anytime we post a new video. But until next time, thanks for watching.